so we have this kind of manifesto. So this is what we care about and, and um, why we get out of bed in the morning is because we are, we're working on trying to solve this MLOps manifesto. Um, and the manifesto is in the form of four tests. So you can kind of apply these tests to your own MLOps pipelines and uh, you can sort of form an opinion about how mature you are against um, the, the, different, uh, the different requirements here. And so the first requirement is that your um, uh, model training and uh, deployment pipelines have to be reproducible. What that means, a good test for this is if I can come along uh, nine months later, um, if someone else can come along nine months later uh, and retrain a model that was trained by somebody else who, uh, without even talking to them with, let's say, an old version of TensorFlow on an old data set, um, with uh, uh, on um, on hardware that is sufficiently equivalent um, that they can retrain the model to within a few percentage points, then you've got a reproducible MLOps pipeline. And if nine months later you can't because you upgraded the version of TensorFlow on your development machines and the data's gone somewhere and you don't know where the data's gone, uh, the data's changed in your production database, then you failed the reproducibility test. And if you fail the reproducibility test, then you're in trouble from a, a governance and, um, and compliance perspective in some industries. The second test is, is your MLOps pipeline accountable? Um, and we talk about accountability from the same perspective that we hold humans accountable for their decision-making process. Um, and one of the ways in which you do that is, you say, on what basis did you make your decision? And the on what basis question uh, with machine learning um, as a minimum requirement, uh, not even going into the whole area of explainability, but as a minimum requirement, you have to be able to say what version of the data was the model trained on. And so you need to be able to track um, the model back to the provenance of, uh, of where that model came from, or what data it was trained on, by whom, and, uh, and so on. The next point, and it's especially pertinent at the moment, is this collaboration uh, requirements. So it has to be possible to do asynchronous collaboration. And this is something that Software DevOps has got sorted um, and MLOps doesn't yet mostly. And this means that um, uh, I need to be able to, uh, uh, if, uh, for example, if, uh, if my colleague Chris is working on a model, um, I need to be able to make a fork of that model um, and I need to be able to make changes to it without treading on Chris's toes. So we both need to be able to uh, collaborate asynchronously and, uh, and get useful work done. Um, now, this has kind of influenced the design of what we're building uh, to a large extent because, uh, because we believe very much in the sort of GitHub uh, pull request style of collaboration that the data scientists are familiar with. And, um, uh, and there are some challenges in, in making that possible for, uh, for ML. Um, and then finally, the model development process has to be continuous. And so there are a couple of things that I mean by this. Uh, the first one is that the uh, development process um, must be automatic. The deployment process, sorry, must be automatic. So it must be possible to automatically deploy um, a model uh, into a staging environment or production environment without manually emailing uh, Jupyter notebooks or uh, uh, or TensorFlow files, um, uh, sort of serialized TensorFlow models around, um, uh, because as soon as you start doing things manually, then it, it introduces this uh, possibility for, for human error. Um, and the other piece is that you have to be able to statistically monitor your models. And this is interesting because uh, monitoring models um, is specifically, is quite different to uh, monitoring regular software that you might deploy it as microservices. And the reason for that is that um, when you monitor um, software, you can monitor things like latencies and error rates. But when you monitor um, micro, uh, sorry, when you monitor models, machine learning models, they can be giving you perfectly normal latencies and perfectly normal error rates. Um, and the model can have gone completely haywire. Um, and the reason for that is Basically, if you already knew the right answer for um, what the model was predicting, then you wouldn't need the model. In other words, the production data is unlabeled. And so um, this means that 
uh, it's challenging to understand the behavior of your, of your model once it's running in production. So an example might be um, that uh, I might have deployed a model uh, for, um, for autonomous uh, vehicles that classify road signs. And so you might have um, a bunch of uh, cars driving around with models running on hardware in the cars and sensors, cameras basically, um, on the cars that are looking around for the road signs. And if you already knew what road sign the sensor was looking at, um, then you wouldn't need the model, right? But at the same time, it means that it's hard to understand the behavior of the model in production. And there are some solutions to this, including uh, looking at the statistical distribution of the classifications that the model is making, if it's a classifier. Um, and then you can say, well, if the actual distribution of classifications drifts very significantly from my expected distribution, like the distribution that I uh, used in training, um, in the training set, then maybe page a human, like fire an alert and get a human to look at what's going on because either you deployed a bad model, in which case, um, well, uh, you need to know about it so that, so that you can roll back and so that you can figure out what went wrong with the new deployed model. Um, uh, or the world changed. And um, especially with things like computer vision, uh, it's, uh, it's often surprising like how the models actually distinguish features um, in the data and um, uh, and you can get stupid things like um, the the computer vision model might never have classified any or never never be trained on any uh, stop signs in the snow and for some reason it can't classify stop signs in the snow so suddenly it snows over a large part of the country and then your um, stop sign classifier stops working and obviously you're in trouble so you need to to have that statistical monitoring um, so those are the requirements. And, and so uh, I'm gonna talk about how, how we can try and address those requirements um, using MLOps tools. 